Hey friends. Okay. Ears up. I have a question for you. Are you a product business owner that has built your business to reach multiple six figures or multiple millions within a calendar year? Are you looking for support to navigate and level up your business in the next 12 months? So if that's you, then we invite you to apply to our highest level program, the product boss mastermind. Now I'm here to remind you that you have done an exceptional job getting to this level of business on your own, but what it will take for you to grow to the next level is going to be very different than what you have done before. Now we know you can level up your business without you having to be the person who does all of the things or the person who makes every single decision, right? And that's why the product boss mastermind is the place for high level strategy and collaboration. So you can connect with other product-based business owners who get it and who are going where you are going, as well as getting the assistance and coaching from two product boss experts, which are Mina and myself. Now, if you're ready to commit to yourself and you want to reach that next level in your business without sacrificing your freedom and creativity, and you want to be surrounded by a collaborative group of product bosses who get it and grow together by sharing ideas, strategies, and insider secrets, then we invite you to apply to be considered to the product boss mastermind at the product boss mastermind.com spots are limited. So don't delay. I would love to see your applications come in. So again, head to the product boss mastermind.com. Welcome to the product boss podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina kunlo an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder. And I'm Mina kunlo Tip, And we help product-based businesses grow their sales, increase their visibility, and build the dream team of their dream life. And today we're going to be talking about, Jacqueline, what are we going to be talking about today? No idea. Just kidding. (laughs) Today, we are actually going to help. We're going to talk about how to build your dream business without feeling like you're drowning. So we're filming this live. We tried a new intro. Mm -hmm. So all of our friends that have listened, um, you know, to our other 300 plus episodes, you probably have heard us with a different intro. So we're trying it out. So my friends that are watching live, go ahead and drop in the link what or drop in the chat what's kind of making you feel afraid to grow your business right because i think a lot of people when they think about growing their businesses and we hear this a lot from our students and our masterminders is that if i continue to grow if i scale if i build this business the way that i kind of dream i'm also going to feel like i'm drowning and i won't be able to get out of the day-to-day operations right i'm going to be i'm going to be in it and like, I won't be able to come up for air. So let me know if that resonates. They think it looks the same as it does right now. So for Mm -hmm. example, if you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you're drowning, you're like, how would I ever grow my business? Because that would just mean like I have to do more and I could never keep up with the amount of orders or I could never, you know, have any time to myself. And it feels like it's suffocating you versus that it will simply look different in that realm of your dream business and dream life. Yeah. And listen, I'm going to tell you that this feels this way, no matter what stage you're in, right? No matter There are what days stage. that feel this way. Yes. Yeah. And, and you could be running a multi-million dollar business and still have days where you feel really overwhelmed and you're like, oh, what am I doing? But it's every level that you go up. So here's the thing. We support uh, product-based business owners in our mastermind. And typically it's $250,000 in revenue a year up to multiple millions, right? Right now we have a lot of half million dollar companies, 750,000, 2 million, $3 million business owners that are in there. And they really struggle at these levels because for so long, I really feel like getting to a quarter of a million, you could probably do it by yourself Mm -hmm. or with one other person, depending on the way that you've structured your business to really grow it. Now, when you start to hit quarter of a million dollars, half million, million, multiple millions, you really have to start to build yourself as the business owner, the boss of your business, the CEO, dare I say. And then you start to 
figure out what you're going to do, what you're going to stop doing and what you're going to hire for. So today we're going to go over a few things that we're teaching in our in-person event. We're bringing our masterminders together in Arizona. It's going to be an incredible retreat. We're hosting them for every meal. It's going to be luxurious. There's going to be mindset to it. There's going to be collaboration. We're going to just really get to be together. And in this, we're going to teach them what to focus on and what to stop doing. So that's the whole training they're going to get. And if you're interested in the mastermind, head to the product boss mastermind.com and you can get an application in. Um, if you're interested and you have a revenue level over 250,000 and above, but we're going to share with you the top three from each of these lists that we're teaching at our in-person event. Yeah. So I think it comes down to a couple things, right? It, we want to keep it super simple. Um, shout out to Sarah Wagner, who is in our mastermind, she is of Heartland Lettering. She, you know how we always say KISS is keep it simple seller? Well, she, she pinged in my ear because she said, keep it super simple. So I've been saying that over and over in my head because I think that when you're in your personal life, you know, and in your business life, you blend it together and you keep it super simple. So two I things. I thought you were going to say keep it simple, Sarah. <laughs> that too, which I love that joke too, because I you know, it's like hashtag. It all works. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Mom jokes here. So, you know, yes, that too, but keep it super simple. And it's really comes down to a couple things when you're at that 250 or 500 and you want to get to millions and multiple millions. And the first part is that you need to build a team. So there's day-to-day -day operations that make you feel like you're drowning. 100%. It makes us all feel like we're drowning. Let's call them the weeds, right? Don't get stuck in the weeds. And so you'll need to streamline and systemize those and it and you need to build a team. This is what we're teaching our masterminders in the in-person mastermind uh, retreat that Jacqueline was talking about that we have with them next week. We'll be talking about that part of it. Now, the second part of getting to that multiple millions without, you know, or whatever it is, you know, 500, a million, um, the second part of that is the seeds in my mind, right? You step into leadership. You step into being the boss of your business, the visionary, the CEO, whatever you want to call it. But in order to do that, you focus on the revenue drivers. And so that really is what we're teaching them as well. Now, can you do that in the day-to-day -day operations? You cannot the day-to-day -day operations are really about day-to-day -day things. They're the weeds, the things that, you know, you know, keep things going. Whereas the seeds, the big things, the leadership, it, it comes from delegation, getting people to do what you want them to do. And they carry out the vision because the greatest leaders are the ones that can have other people delegate for them. And so what we can or do for them, do for them right? And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they get to work in their strengths. So it's not anything, you know, demeaning or anything like don't, you know, don't get it confused with that. It's something where you're contributing, everybody's contributing to this business and this vision, and it feels really good. And so Jacqueline and I came up with a stop list and a focus list. The stop list are all the things you need to stop because you better believe we stop ourselves in a gazillion different ways. You know, we feel like we're drowning. So this is happening, you know, and there's lots of things that you need to stop. And we came up with 10 things. Now, the focus list is, okay, now that you're stopping this, what do you start and continue to do? That's what you focus on. And it's much easier when you have a reference, a sheet like this checklist that we're giving our masterminders. And it's like seven things that they're focusing on. So then that way it's like, okay, Jacqueline and Mina said to stop doing this. I need to stop doing this because I want to reach, you know, 500, 1 million, multiple millions. And I need to focus on this. And that is why the, the lists are really important. Yeah. And I want to say our masterminders. So if your ears have pinged because you're making the revenue level and you're like, oh, I'm interested in this mastermind, ladies, how do I get in? Our masterminders do have teams. So at this mm -hmm. revenue level, they have either a couple people to full on teams and they're developing departments. But like I said, in the very beginning of the episode is, um, and actually our friend Kelly Roach says this is it's a boomerang. A lot of times we'll hire someone we don't train them well enough. We we send a whole bunch of things off of our plate because we're like, we don't want to do this anymore. We don't want to do this anymore. We've hired somebody, but it boomerangs right back to us as the business owners and we're responsible for it. Now in our mastermind, they're dealing with really higher, like higher level things where it's hiring and firing, right? Delegating, starting to get people to take over decision-making versus just doers, right? There's people that you have to constantly be managing and telling them to do versus eventually hiring decision-makers. So this is that first part though, because you know, we always lean back to mindset. And I want you, even if you're not in a place you're listening now and you're like, I'm not at that revenue level yet, but you'll pick some stuff up because 
even within our accelerator. So the accelerator are people who business owners that are making less than 250,000 or our students in multi-stream machine. There's a lot of mindset stuff that gets in the way of growing a business. And it starts with what the title of this episode was, which is like how to build your business to feel without feeling like you're drowning. There are some people that have already hit revenue levels um, that are higher and they believed enough in themselves, but they feel like they're drowning. And there's a lot of you, and let me know if that's you that are feeling like, I don't want to grow because I currently feel like I'm drowning. And if I keep growing, I will just continue to drown and it's not going to work. Right. So I just want you all to realize that there's different stages, um, to this. So Mina, let's start with, you want to start with the stop list? Yeah. I think you start with a stop list for sure, because there's lots of things that, as Jacqueline said, it's a mindset switch in a lot of ways and they go on repeat. So even if you're, you know, under 250 or you're over 250, doesn't really matter. These things in some way, shape or form will always impact the way you think. Okay. And if you're watching live and you're comfortable with it, share in the comments under 250 or over 250. I'd love to see who's watching live. So starting with the stop list, we are going to just share the top three. Um, If you're interested in the mastermind, go to the productclassmastermind.com. You can sign up and you will get access to this training when you do sign, when, if you're accepted, if your application goes in and you're accepted. And the worksheet, there's like red stop marks on there. Stop, stop, 10 times. Okay. So number one is stop stunting your own growth because it's hard to hire the right people. Yeah. Hard to hire the right people. Right. That's a big thing for people. A lot of times they're like, I can't hire the right people. No one can do it as well as I can do it. Um, I feel it feels hard to hire. You know, there's a lot of reasons and excuses for not being able to take something off your plate and to stop growing because it's hard to hire the right people. Yeah. That's the thing that will stop a lot of people. They feel like they're drowning. They don't know if they have the finances. They don't even try to look to see if they do because it's just so hard to hire the right people. The thing is, Mm -hmm. it's hard for everybody and that will forever stop you if you let it. So the thing is like, taking that limitation, that's a total limiting belief right there of that, you know, it's hard to hire people, but you're, you truly are stunting your own growth. If you limit the way you think and you give yourself the excuse of, I'm just not doing it because it's really hard to hire the right people. I don't even know if I have the money. Okay. Well, what if it was hard for everybody? What if you eventually will find the right person? You got to kiss a lot of frogs probably, or you might find the right person immediately. Who knows? And what if you did look to see if you could afford it? Oh, well, that's something different then, you know? And I work with, you know, we we work with people in, in millions to multiple millions. And listen, as product-based businesses, we have a lot of cash out, right? Mm-hmm. Cash flow for product development, for cost of goods. So sometimes if you're listening to service-based people, it's easier to hire because there's not a big overhead. Product-based business owners have a big overhead. Now, the level of those of you listening that are mastermind level, at this point, you've probably hired one or two people, uh, or maybe it depends on where you're at, but one or two people that are assisting you. And we like to say your first hires are typically fulfillment or production. But where we're finding a lot of our masterminders get caught is they're getting caught in, (laughs) you know, still posting on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They're getting caught in you know, there's, let's see, I'm trying to think there's people who are marketing. That's a big, that's a big issue right now for a lot of our masterminders because things that worked are not working. So if they were running ads and maybe they delegated out to an ads team and it's not working anymore. Um, and they're thinking that they need to take it back on their plate, or maybe they're not going to do it. They're thinking about, uh, writing the emails or they writing the emails or they building their websites. But when you start to get into this quarter million, million dollar, multiple millions, you really have to get your head wrapped around the idea of hiring whether you're hiring a contractor, you're hiring an expert, you're hiring a team member for it. Instead of saying like, I could just do it, or, um, you know, it's hard to hire the right people that are going to get it right. We all made mistakes as as we've been growing our business. And if you can train and onboard people in the right way, right, then you can, you can not guarantee, but it will be an easier onboarding to bring someone on your team. Yeah. I think also they get stuck on hiring a second in command right? Like we've had a lot of our masterminders that are million dollars and over that have a second in command where the business owner gets to be the visionary. They get to think of the big ideas. They get to think about like their marketing and their design and 
the things like that, but they have someone else that's acting as like a chief operations officer or a second in command. And that's the person dealing with the team members and the business owner doesn't have to be the one that's managing the day to day. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. So I think we should move to the second and third and then do the start. Cause I think you cu- basically at a full scope covered a lot of the things. <laughs> um, so if we go through the list, I think you all start to kind of reinforce the idea of that you do need to hire. You become a master of delegation, a master of leadership, and you step into building that vision from a leadership standpoint. You know, you built the business, you're the brains of the the operation, and you that's what you do. That's your role. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the second one for stop was stop thinking you have to do everything and that it's the only way to do things. So this hits on what Jacqueline was talking about is a lot of times we think we have to do everything and it's the only way to do things. When you hire on a team member, if you don't give them the proper onboarding, but allow them to implement in their own way. So they stick with the guidelines. They stick with the SOP, the standard operating procedures, but is your way exactly like, do you have to micromanage them? The goal is no, right? You start with the process and they potentially improve upon it, you know? And it's kind of like, you don't actually see the gaps and t- in a, a, a operating system, a standard operating procedure, let's say this is how you ship something out. You don't ever see the gaps until somebody actually puts into action. Clarity comes from action and execution. So unless somebody's like, oh, I have to go get the tape 50 feet away from me every time. I'm like, oh, we need the tape station closer to you. I know that sounds like a silly thing, but believe it or not, there's inefficiencies in a lot of ways that people don't naturally think about. Yeah. I think the other thing is, is when we've built these businesses ourselves in a lot of ways, there's the ways that are just ingrained. But when you start to get to the point that you're able to hire and you're able to hire people that are trained, like we've been so lucky lately as we've been scaling the product class, that we have, we're not just bringing in people for cheap and trying to like find a spot for them and pay them not a lot of money and then teach them how to do things on our team. Now we're hiring people that have expertise in marketing or have expertise in operations, right? And so then it's easier to hand stuff off and not do it the way that we've always been doing it and not say like, hey, head of operations, you have to do it this way. Rather, they come in and they almost, because they're professionals, they come in and they audit what we're doing and they see our systems and they look for ways to improve. That's when your business is really, you're going to really start to feel like, I'm going to put in quotes again, like a legit business owner. I mean, that's me. And I, like a few weeks ago, we're like, wow, we have departments, we have department heads. Mm -hmm. It feels so quote unquote big time. I know we're doing so many air quotes, but it feels crazy amazing that we don't have to think and do everything. Because we're not in the weeds, right? We're not in the weeds. And so when you start growing your team, you, the day-to-day operations flow without you. So even if you were plucked to pluck yourself out for like a, a a vacation, it would not burn to the ground. You wouldn't drown in it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So should we skip that third one and go to the fourth one? Sure. Or do you like the third one? Okay. So the third one that we're going to share with you is stop holding yourself back from hiring and firing as needed and at will. (laughs) So I wrote this one. Um, So uh, based off of the fact that a lot of it has to do with mindset and thinking that you have to chase an employee or you have to make them want to love you, in order for them to stay and the business gets a little bit diluted and the team does. But the thing is, when you're the boss of your business, you have to be willing to hire at will and fire at will. And it has nothing to do with that person. It has to do with the fit and the, and honestly, the timing and the season of life. So, so, you know, because like sometimes like the best thing you can do is bless and release them. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not their season of life, like to be in your business and contribute in the way that they want to, or you're not a good fit for them. So I think that the people get, um, they get tripped up. They get confused in their own thoughts because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I need, I need to pay their bills or I need to, I need them to pay their bills or I need them to stay on the team. You know, it just gets so, um, heavy and, and then that's what stops you. Hey friends. So question for you. Do you want to know the secrets to product biz success? 
Well, I know a lot of people out there think the key to reaching more customers is creating more products, right? You think if you just create more products, you're going to reach more customers and more people are going to buy from you. Well, spoiler alert, it's not. So believe it or not, going wider in your business, making more products won't get you the results that you want. You've got to go deeper, friend. You've got to niche down. You've got to sell what people are wanting to buy, right? We want you to be known for something. There are opportunities right in front of you that will help your product business grow. And we're going to help you unlock them in our product biz bootcamp, which is the bestseller audio bootcamp. You heard it right. We are giving you this inside of the bestseller audio bootcamp. It's our on-demand lifetime access training that shows you how to stop wasting your time and energy on the things that don't matter, like endlessly creating new products and start focusing on what really moves the needle in your product business, like discovering your untapped opportunities for a product-based business or creating your best offers to take advantage of your best sellers. How about building your year round plan, right? We want to learn how to make more sales and grow a profitable product based business. And we're also going to help you amplify your best sellers and how you're going to share them with the world and figure out what are the right products to sell at the right time. So you're not just spinning your wheels and feeling overwhelmed and burnt out. Plus, you're going to get access to additional trainings of help. For example, on how to get more done in less time in a workshop. You're also going to have a workshop that's going to help you find the key to choosing the products to help your business thrive. And another workshop that you're going to learn the secrets to scaling your business. And here's the best part. You ready? You can start right now. Okay. So just head to theproductboss.com slash bootcamp. Again, that's the productboss.com slash bootcamp. You can sign up now and you can get access to all of these incredible trainings that are really going to help you grow a profitable product-based business by leaning in to your best sellers. All right, friends, we'll see you in there. I think from the hiring perspective, a lot of times we're afraid to have higher expenses to hire or to even hire someone qualified that will really. So I have, um, one of, she's an old mastermind of ours that I coach, but one of the biggest things that she was approaching a million and now she wants to hit two and a half million this year was getting her to hire. So she had, you know, young women that were post-college that were kind of doing things. But as we were scaling this business and really turning it into this like really well-established established brand, we had to hire a designer, someone who was a designer that had worked for other companies that also fully understood production and development at the scale in which this clothing company works. Now, that's an expensive person. That was like a $75,000 person part-time. But let me tell you in the year of working with this uh, woman, how much her business has changed. The, the, the up leveling of the brand that $2 million, two and a half million, 10 million is completely possible because instead of just kind of like, I don't know, duct, duct taping, tape and yeah. chewing gum. I call it Frank Steining it, Frankenstein it together. Cause you Frankenstein yeah. it to a certain point and then you have to hire the people that can do what they do best. And pay, and you want to pay for the, the level, the quality, the, the talent you're paying for the talent. And so that's, and I'm going to say, Mina and I are both, um, you know, we've done this as well, where we weren't, as we were growing our business, we were afraid to pay for the talent. We're like, we can't afford, a you know, a COO at this amount of money. Like it was overwhelming that we thought, but it was really a mindset thing. And if we hire that, how much easier a business feels now, the flip side, which we deal with a lot in our mastermind are, is firing. We had a masterminder that wouldn't go to her office on days that a certain woman was working there because they got into such conflict that the owner of the business didn't show up at work because of someone who worked for her. So we had to work on figuring out how to bless and release this person and to hire and replace. We have another, um, there's so much team drama, another masterminder that had, um, an employee like poisoned the well basically and got a whole bunch of people to resign at the same time. And then this masterminder had to be her and her husband had to be back in the business on the day to day because everyone kind of got wiped out. So we were working on things to put into place to avoid this, to build company culture. But when people need to get fired, they need to go as well. Yeah. Because your responsibility is keeping your business up and running. And it's a skill, right? Learning how to fire and learning how to hire is definitely a skill. Nobody is great at it from the get-go, nor do they, are they get good at it all the time, you know? So learning to fire somebody, for example, it can get be really hard. And in the mastermind, there was people that were doing um, role-playing, right? Role-playing to 
each other. Each they other. Would, they're like, oh, you to need to fire that this person. person. Let's jump on a call. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they were developing that skill set and that muscle because we've never had these conversations before of being able to fire or hire or all these different things, right? So if you haven't, it gets really hard. And if you practice it, it gets easier and you have to do what you need to do. And a lot of times it, everything is fine. It works out just fine. And I think, and, and even if it doesn't, you've got the things in place that protect you as a company. So unless you're best friends with someone in HR, right? It's hard to kind of work this out. We don't all have HR departments. So I think the beautiful thing about our mastermind, because the thing about our mastermind is we're facilitating and creating these collaborations and these relationships amongst other business owners that are at the same revenue level that are dealing with very similar issues. So when these issues come up, these different masterminders, they might have it as a hot seat or they might bring it to their cohort and they're talking about it. The whole group will collaborate with each other and say, oh, I tried this. Oh, I have this employee manual in place and they'll share the employee manual. Someone, you know, a couple of times people have said, oh, I'll jump on a call with you and let's like role play out how to release this person, let them go. Um, you know, there's just a lot of collaboration. And I think that's the beauty of the mastermind because at this level of business for our masterminders, there's not a lot of people to sit down at the table with and say all these things that are, that come up as business owners and that you need that support, whether it's mindset support, friendship support, business support in making these big boss decisions. Yeah. It's a stop list for a reason. It's really hard to do, to stop doing something that you're inclined to do or tend to tendencies to do. So those were the top three that we shared with you. Our masterminders will get the 10 that we put together. And I think for our focus list, there's only seven on the list. Maybe we should just do the top two or the number one and three, if you want to read those over. Um, yeah. Because this is where you will shift your energy, right? Once you do the things on the stop list and let us know if that was helpful, right? Was that helpful for helping you know what to stop doing? And, um, and then now we'll let you know what you should focus on. So no matter where you are in business, right, but at the level of businesses that we support in our mastermind, we really try and level you up as the CEO of your business, right? The boss of your business. So one of the first things on the focus list is we want you as a business owner to focus on your development as a leader, as a CEO, and growth opportunities for you personally as a leader and for your business. So what does that look like? Mina and I are at this point now where we are focusing on ourselves. This is our year of development as leaders owning the size business that we own. And we've really been focusing on us developing our mindset, taking new opportunities. If you listen to the today's or the episode that was airing today when we were recording this live, it was about being fearless, right? And it was something that had to expand our mind and our experiences personally to be better leaders, to grow this business to the revenue level that we want, to manage this team that we have. So I'm going to just say it again. Focus on your development as a leader, CEO, and growth opportunities for you personally as a leader and for your business. Yeah. Personal really ties into both since you are the boss of your business because you need to work those muscles of personal development as well as challenging your comfort zones. You know, I think that when you're building a business because you're working with, you know, let's say you hire the team and you're doing all these things for you to be able to focus on revenue drivers the way that you are when you, you know, there's the day-to-day -day operations that are being handled, but the revenue drivers need to be handled. Well, you need to challenge your comfort zone. And we will always stop ourselves if, if we're not thinking, if, if we are scared, right? The fear mm -hmm. of the unknown. So for example, we were talking about the episode. It's a really great episode to go to because everybody has their own version of what that fear is, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, whatever it is. And we need to be able to still move forward. And when you develop your yourself personally, it helps you to expand your brain and that discomfort level that you're willing to push into big opportunities for your business. Yeah. Okay. So then the second thing that we want you to focus on is, which one did you want to read? Um, you I do. don't know if it should be number two or number three, because I think okay. we went over number two quite a bit. And I think number three might be great. Okay. So focus on that initial time of creating processes in your operations that can be improved upon as well as roles and functions being established that you can hand off. 
out of your brain and out of your hands. Yeah. Do you want to dig into that? So there is going to be an initial time. Jacqueline called it onboarding, but what is onboarding? It's literally that initial time of creating processes in your operations that can be improved upon. So as we said about the boomerang effect, you actually need to document certain things. And as the visionary, like, okay, so let's say you start to hire a team and you're like, I've been doing it this way for forever. And I'm going to write down how I made this candle step by step by step. Well, that process has to be documented. So you need that initial part of that standard operating procedure so you can hand it off. And that is literally what you need to do. It needs to come out of your brain and then out of your hands. Now, the hard part, well, there's two hard parts. People don't want to get it out of their brain, nor do they want to get it out of their hands. So focus on doing those two things of that initial documentation process, and that'll be the first step into the hiring. And this is important because (laughs) over here at the Product Bus team, we call it, and now that we have our fake nails, we call it talent. (laughs) Like (laughs) Mina, myself, Lauren, who's our basically our, our acting COO, sometimes getting us to release as the leaders, right? It's Mina and I and Lauren is below us in terms of leadership and on our team, um, releasing certain things that we've done, maybe it boomeranged back to our plate. And then we've been doing something that way. And it's like letting go of it. And we're like, no, the way I do it is better. You know, for me, I, you know, sometimes my reels do better than when the team posts reels. Mina writes really great emails. And then sometimes when the emails are written by somebody else, we're not sure about them. And so we're like, oh, we'll just do them. And our talents are in deep. But the idea here is, is we got to let go, right? We need to create the processes right? We need to take that time initially to set the stage of how we want it. You know, Mina wrote emails like this. This is the function of it. This is how it works. Teaching people, going through it, letting them improve upon it, right? That we could hand it off and kind of bless and release. And like, we'll be able to train on it. Same thing with, let's call it social and saying, okay, like when I do it this way, it works really well. And all we can do is like, let them make the mistakes and then teach on that. But I think a lot of times when people try and hand things off. They also try and just hand it off and walk away. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not a bless and release and good luck. Okay. Write our sales emails um, and, and allow them to make the mistakes. We're not saying that at all. You definitely, the whole point of this one is that you are creating processes in your operations that can be improved upon. So for example, here's the cadence of the emails. During launch, we do this many emails. So this is, you know, the big Black Friday promotion that we're doing. Oh, okay, now we're going to do a series of 10 emails. This is how I usually like to do it. Go ahead and write these and then come back to me and let's see. So then the, the first time around is always the hardest go around. Then in the the post launches and stuff like that, it will be handed off to them. But initially, you can't expect them to read your mind and you cannot expect them to um, not make mistakes, especially if you're like, hey, write these sales emails. It's too big. They have no idea what you want. They have no idea what you've done. They have no idea of what your business vision is for those emails. You know, it's um, it, it's not just a handoff because then it will boomerang back to you. Right. So that's what we want to focus on, right? And Mm -hmm. long-term, long-term, and some of you out there that are qualified for the mastermind, again, the productbossmastermind.com, you can put in an application and our scaling specialist will reach out to you to see if it's a good fit, if there's spots in the mastermind. So please, if you're listening in the future, put in an application. But the idea here is that some of you may be that you already have a second in command, right? But Maybe there's not processes in place. Maybe the operations aren't happening well. Because I'll tell you now that we've created this these um, departments within our business, we have department heads that are now in charge of creating processes and operations and then training the team members underneath them. So long-term, this is where when you're all afraid of growth and you feel like you're going to drown. And so all of my businesses that are listening that are not qualified for the mastermind just yet, right? You're making under 250, but you're thinking, okay, this is maybe a little bit bigger than where I'm at right now. I'm not at the place of hiring. I want you to listen to what we said, because you can see that there's all this potential out there that what your business looks like today is not what your business is going to look like when you hit these revenue levels that you maybe dream about. Um, and it will always be about growth. It'll always be about team. It'll always be about you as the business owner 
refining what you do, stopping to do certain things, focusing on things, right? You may eventually be, I'll just bring up Jamie Kern Lima. She was on the podcast with It Cosmetics. Jamie Kern Lima was no longer, you know, doing all the things she did when she started, but she positioned herself that she was the face of the brand. She would be the person who sold on, I don't remember if it's QVC or HSN. Mm-hmm. Um, and so her, what she stopped doing in the day to day, she probably even stopped doing her finances and had someone in charge of finance and she just got reports on it. And then she was able to be the face of the brand and negotiate the big deals for the brand and kind of oversee and say, okay, I've got this idea for, you know, X, Y, Z product. And she let her development team happen and do it. Or her development team created new products based on what consumers were saying. And, and maybe, or maybe not, she may or may not have had decision-making I mean, she sold her business for a billion dollars, right? So I want you all to realize though, that like what it looks like now is not what it's going to look like as you grow. And there's so many stages to it. And eventually you may not have to make decisions within departments at all, but rather just look at a CEO report and just know the health and status of your business. Yeah. And we're talking really big business here. We're talking multi-millions. And I know some of you might not even want that, right? Because even thinking about like having to manage teams, I know it can get overwhelming to a lot of people. The point is, is that you can hire for what you need to hire for and you get out of the day-to-day operations. So for example, even if you have a small team, you get to focus your energies on what you do best within the realm of revenue drivers, of the vision of your business. So, you know, you don't have to be in the making. And I know we kind of give people the ability, like if you love making, then you can keep making. But really, you should not be making what is already selling. If anything, make something else that might be the variation of that or the big opportunity or whatever it is, you know, where it's not like, okay, I'm, this is my Citrona Mandarin candle from, you know, Lodestone and I'm Greg and I own this and I know that I love making. So I'm going to keep pouring the candles. Now imagine if I hired somebody that knew all day long how to create this bestseller and did it for me. Then the room and the space that I have in my brain would lead to something else. So even if you love making, use the brain power to make in a different way that could potentially grow your business in a better way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like the vision, like becoming the vision or visioning person. Yeah. So maybe Greg's superpower is that he understands scent, like blending of scents. You know how there's like perfumers that their noses are, you know, they, they'll like insure their noses yeah. because it's the, their sense of smell. Um, so then let's say that's Greg's superpower. Mm-hmm. And he right now doesn't need to hire yet for the perfumer, but he's the one who's like, the development of the brand and the aesthetic and the sense. Then that way, Greg has a space now to go into his office because he's got a whole new warehouse, by the way. Um, but let's say he sets up this beautiful office and he has all his scents and he could really spend some of his days like mixing scents and trying them out and then flushing out new products and then give it to the person who's in production. And that person in production can just pour the candles, do the production and get it out there. Because if if Greg's all day, every day, pouring the candles of the thing that's already selling, where does the development happen? Where does the inspiration happen? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I think that was a great example. So I hope that this helped. If you have your ears pinged, you're making over 250,000, um, half million, 750, a million, two, three, four. We've had $15 million companies in the mastermind. Um, I would tell you to go check out the productlastmastermind.com. Um, if you want to get an application in, you can always send us a DM that just says mastermind. Um, and our scaling specialist will touch base with you and see if it's a good fit and how we can help you scale your business. So thank you everyone. And, um, we'll talk to you next time. Yeah. Thanks everybody. We hope to see you in there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Class Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the product class community. We are all in this together. 
We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the Shop One in Five Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shoponeinfive.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop1in5.com.